let's jump into our uh our movie reviews that we have coming up here. Uh, so over this past week, uh, it has been released on Amazon prime video, the sequel to coming to America, which was coming to America. And I'm, I'm so I'm actually kind of glad this movie's out so I can stop referencing it that way for at least for right now. Right. Uh, but this movie has come out. Uh, it was highly anticipated. It was like 30, 33 years in the making roughly. Uh, and so I know we talked about it a couple of times. We've done like the trailer reactions. Uh, we were able to finally sit down and watch this movie and our thoughts on this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, like, let, let's go ahead and like, get some positives in there. Cause I don't want to feel like we're just, we're just going to sit there and dog on this movie because I've seen that a lot. I know a lot of y'all watching y'all have seen that a lot already. Uh, the internet is just full of negative reviews for this movie. And the thing with that is the reason I think there's so many negative reviews. The original movie is so good. Like we did the we did the ranking of Eddie Murphy. Guess where Coming to America was on that ranking? Go watch the ranking to find out. Exactly. Uh, but I mean, it ranked pretty high on that on that ranking video, yep. and there's a reason for that. It is a really good movie. Everything they did in that movie was phenomenal. Like the jokes, the the way it played, uh, like socially, was great. It's a classic '80s comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will e I'll even say it's one of the greatest comedies of the 80s as well. Yeah. And it, the problem with that is you take a movie, which I know that's a lot of people's opinions. And 33, later, 33 years later, you create a sequel to it. I don't know if you're going to hit that same kind of level. It's going to be very hard. Because you know everyone's going to scrutinize it. Yeah. Everyone's going to look at it from a different point of view now that it has been 33 years. It's very rare that you can accomplish such a feat. I mean, you look at Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber, or Dumb and Dumber 2, any of the Dumb and Dumber yeah. sequel follow-ups or whatever. You Zoolander. look at Zoolander 2 was... Uh, Anchorman 2 wasn't as good as Anchorman 1. I mean, you look at all these comedy sequels and, and whatnot comedy sequels in general are hard to pull off but especially ones that are years and years later like like this one is mm -hmm. um so uh, like i said like i want i want to talk about the positives for it it was nice seeing some of these characters coming back you could you could honestly see in the actors in this movie how much they enjoyed being back with all with one another filming another movie and some of them like there were a lot of people in this movie i i can't believe they managed to pull them back for for this um i i will say like as we're going through this i'm not really going to spoil anything we'll talk about something here in a minute uh that isn't really spoilerish, but it might be a little just a small piece but otherwise you should be safe spoiler free for this review there were people brought back from the original in this movie that it was nice to see them again. Mm -hmm. um, some of it, you could kind of tell they were brought back just for a nice, like, fan service throwback. But even some of those, you're like, oh, okay. It, 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 that's kind of cool. Um, some of them were a little, a little more like, uh, okay, really? You didn't have to do it that way, but. And now we're talking less like just actual other actors in the movie and more about the retreading some of the characters that that uh, uh, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall were also playing. Yeah. Uh, some of them like uh, uh, replaying the uh, the barbershop, the mighty sharp guys. Um, oh, they're great. Them. Yeah. The, like, I think they were one of the best parts of this movie. Not that it really makes any sense for any of those characters to still be alive 30 something years later, but you know, you just got to leave suspension of disbelief aside. 
Because they really don't look like, even with the makeup and stuff, they really don't look like they aged that much over the course of like the 33 years or so. Uh, they already look like they were pretty old in the original. So it was like, oh, okay, so 33 years later, we're going to make a movie, and oh, we still want these guys to be a part of it. Just give them a few more wrinkles, but nothing too, nothing too over the top. <laughs> uh, that being said, I will say some of it, though, uh, I'll give props to the director for this in that the flashback scenes, they did some scenes where it was flashing back to the original, but then they added new scenes and they had uh, specifically with uh, Arsenio Hall, they had to make him look younger. They had to make him nowadays look like himself back in 88. And like some of, some of what they did there was actually really good, especially in the fact that there were some scenes where they had, bits and pieces or clips from the original movie right there next to new footage. Yeah. And you would have thought it would have clashed, but they made it look so, so flawless. And like, I, I like that was fantastic that they had that. They had those shots, those scenes in the movie. I think they did very well with that. Um, Yeah. There's, there's other a lot of, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of aspects of this movie that were that were good. Uh, I, I said this. There's about there's definitely and this kind of gives obviously gives away m- the majority of my thoughts about this movie. But there's a good about twenty percent, fifteen to twenty percent of this movie that I actually really really enjoyed. And a lot of that does have to do with some of those nostalgia beats, some of those old characters coming back, or or referencing some of the things that they did from the first one. Some of that stuff I did like. Um, you know, there's all, there's a certain certain uh, elephant or whatever. You know, there's there's that kind of those kinds of beats or whatever that I really really enjoyed. But for the other eighty percent of the movie, it just treaded too much too much on what came before. Kind of redid too too much of what came before, and, and that in a way undid a lot of the. Uh, character development that we had gotten from the first movie or some of the uh, information that we knew about certain characters from the first movie kind of, kind of overrode that and just brought them back to square one, which that was, that was just a very unfortunate way to take, take the uh, movie because it really made the movie feel like it was unnecessary and not needed. Um. It was a funny scene, but them remembering a customer they saw only once over 30 years ago. That is pretty funny, but uh, my only argument to that is the fact that I guess Prince Akeem just made such an impression on them. But, I mean, that is pretty funny. (laughs) I like it. uh, that Something like that is what I like about this. When a a real life, the way we would normally be kind of clashes with the way the movie was written. You're like, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is 33 years later. Even if he made a great impression, they probably wouldn't remember him. They're like, Hey, we remember that when there was another African prince that came into our store that one time ago, 30 years ago, wouldn't remember it was you though. So, um, some of the like I, I guess my detractors of this movie was the storyline overall. The storyline I felt like was a little weak in that it's it's basically a way to bring back the, yeah. it, it's basically a way to bring back fan service. Like the the, the storyline was it, it seemed like talking about how yeah. Akeem Akeem has to go find a son. Um that wasn't a part of the original and it just kind of felt out of place where all of a sudden, Oh yeah, he's got a son now. And that's, that's something that we took away from watching the first one. Even again, recently, just like at what point do you fit him having a son into the storyline of what happened in the first movie? Cause it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense for him to have diverted path at any point to, especially with what his character stood for in the first movie for him to have diverted path to acquire essentially a son from the storylines of the first movie, which means that they had to find a way to explain how it was that he had a son based on the events of the first movie. And the issue with that is that, 
I don't know how like detailed we want to get here, but it is a very problematic, very problematic scenario. Uh, let's just say consent is very necessary and talking about consent. I mean, we talked about it, you know, earlier in, in this stream with yep. the whole not bringing Pepe Le Pew into the new Looney Tunes, into the new Space Jam. We're talking about consent. And that is a big deal nowadays. And this movie just felt very tone deaf on that front uh, when it comes to that. And I think that's a discussion that we might see springboard off the back of this movie in the coming days. But it's 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 not... It's not necessarily a thing that we necessarily all feel comfortable laughing at anymore. It's yeah. just not because it's just not it's just not a good story point. It's not it's not right. So the reason I brought it up and yeah, the connection I was originally making with uh, Pepe Le Pew is that. Like, by the way, I plan on probably clipping this out. So anyone who's watching this and hears us like talking about Pepe Le Pew in the middle of a coming to America review, you're going to have to watch the entire tagline to see that reference. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the the reference I w- uh, that I was thinking with that is that it, it, it's a flashback scene that happens in within this movie. Again, flashing back to the 1988 version. It was something that we didn't see in 1988, obviously. Um, but it's a flashback, not only in the movie, but I feel like it's a flashback in the ideals in the, what happens the way Akeem gets a son, what we're basically trying to not, we're hinting about is something that like back in 1988, you wouldn't have thought of like if that, if we actually saw what happens in this movie in the original 1988, we all of us probably would have thought it was hilarious and funny and we would have paid no, never mind to it. But nowadays you watch it and you're like, Oh, but I get that you're, you're trying to do a flashback to that movie and to that decade, that time period. But it's, it doesn't translate it, it well. Does, it, yeah, it doesn't translate well in the fact that this movie is showing us that for the first time nowadays, and it doesn't work in today's mindset. And it's being played for laughs. Yeah, and like we're suppo- we're su- like we're supposed to transport all of our minds back to the eighties and watch watch that scene with that eighties mind point of view. Which for some people, I I absolutely believe it's okay. You you could do it. Uh, you're able to to separate the comedy, the art from the real life. I get that, but Appar- the problem is, is that nowadays we have a situation where, with access to the internet, we have access to people's stories. We have access to the trauma that people feel in 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 these situations that they have they they have uh, experienced in their lives, mm-hmm. and we are now aware that this isn't something that's funny anymore. It might have been funny back then when we had less information, but we have more information now. And so situations where people are forced into situations without their consent is not funny. And so it just really felt like a very tone deaf point in this movie that kind of left a bad taste over the entire rest of the movie. And it's what leads me to saying that 80% of this movie I really didn't enjoy while only 20%, which is the, the funny callbacks and, and story beats from like the first one I did enjoy, but for the most part, I can't me. I can't give this movie say higher than like a three or four star out of 10. And and I believe the uh, kind of the same out of, out of 10, I was given this a three star. Uh, I, I, I'm going to come back and I'm going to say again, positively, one of the thing the thing i really did like about this movie is it brought everyone back together and i loved that the we got to see a lot of uh, again not spoiling but i mean we got to see uh was it lisa mm-hmm. where have you seen that actress like since coming to america she's been around but just not in anything that's been like forefront in the general public yeah. mind yeah, it was nice being able to catch up not only with the characters but with the actors. And I know from like hearing about like how filming went and everything behind the scenes, they all loved making this movie. Yeah. And uh, that's why I, like uh, again, I I also I don't rate this movie high, but I you got to appreciate the love 
of the people who make the movie. There was still love put into this movie. And then again, in some sh- scenes, you can see it kind of like when your grandmother makes a really good Christmas dinner, you can taste the love in her food. You can see the love in this movie and uh, that I appreciated by it. But as far as the story, the story was, I, uh, I wish it was a little stronger. Um, I think that was my only takeaways on this. Yep. So we're both uh, not really rating this one too high. Probably both around like a three star area. Uh, So that means we don't necessarily recommend it. Now, obviously, we would always say that if you want to see this movie and you haven't yet, then by all means, watch it. If you walk away and uh, you are able to enjoy the movie for all intents and purposes, then then that is that is your prerogative. I mean, it's it's great for people to be able to enjoy what they enjoy, and and people can not enjoy what they don't enjoy. So, uh, if you are new on this channel, if uh, if this is the first time you're seeing us review anything, uh, we would ask you to come back, check out other reviews. You can subscribe on this channel, do all sorts of the YouTube stuff, follow us at these social media links, and all sorts of stuff. This is clipped out on our channel. This is from our regular stream. You can see the. The word up there says the tagline. That is our Tuesday night stream. So come back on Tuesday nights, 930 Central Time. We do a live stream. So that is that's all sorts of fun stuff that we do here on this channel. So just definitely, definitely come back later. And uh, as we do other reviews and whatnot.